the Pyramid of Menkura, the smallest, yet by no means least interesting of the Great Pyramids of Giza, claimed to have been built by the Egyptian pharaoh Menkura some 4,000 years ago. The pyramid's origins, however, like the many other giant and perfectly carved structures and statues found throughout the Giza Plateau, no one seems to be able to explain how or why such figures within known, well-studied history accomplished such feats. With the entrance to the Chapel of the Cult exposing just how much of a challenge this construction would have been for our copper-welding ancestors some 4,000 years ago. Lined with megalithic sandstone blocks, with some well over 100 tons in weight, the remains of basalt casting stones strewn around their feet, either disturbed by invading parties or simply fallen from where they once stood, in front of the megalithic blocks, all now exposed to the elements, with additional styles from other, now lost civilizations littered all around the pyramid indicative of its rediscovered importance by other now lost civilizations, who we feel clearly came and went since the pyramid's original constructions. This extraordinary section of the ruins are predictably rarely discussed or studied. We believe this due to the inexplicable nature of the surrounding ruins, in addition to further supporting claims that the casting stones found upon the pyramids are not only covering megalithic blocks of an even larger scale, but were a later addition, just like that of the unfinished polygonal masonry, making up additional casing stones around the entrance of the Menkura pyramid itself. Furthermore, Menkura also contains inner chambers, just like that of the world-famous Cheops. Yet rumors that only Cheops possess such tunnels persist to the modern day, and one wonders why. Why was Menkura clearly focused on by several different conservation efforts? Why is it the only pyramid with Peru-style polygonal casing stones? Who could have possibly built the entrance tunnel, or indeed the pyramids themselves? And why is the pyramid largely, and it would seem purposefully, overlooked? We find the possible motivations highly compelling. When it comes to the particular ancient uparts that we share, which have a simply impossible age, this, in regard to the modern chronological paradigm of man's historical origins, in which man evolved from the sea to the cave and then into modern civilization, in a supposedly already mapped out and fully understood linear fashion with no gaps whatsoever. A position made to attain undeserved authority over historical teachings. Thus, when an object turns up which contests these so-called already established factual ideologies, it is either simply dismissed or those who oppose such possibilities of its existence go to great length to discredit its authenticity in any way. Furthermore, it must be mentioned that many more than could be contributed to coincidence have mysteriously disappeared over the years, scenarios, and events which simply strengthen the original claims of the object's authenticity. Our next artifact of interest being no exception. Known as the Meister print, it is an artifact that many have attempted to discredit as an authentic human footprint for good reason. And when one recites the academic opposed theory regarding the dismissal of said hypothesis of human origin, it exposes how miserably said attempt was. It is simply written off as a portion of Jurassic strata, at which, at some point in the distant past, naturally fractured, coincidentally, into the form of a human-shaped shoe print. However, this explanation, or attempted dismissal, avoids any attempt to explain away the main feature within the print, which not only proves it was indeed a print, once made by induced pressure onto this ancient earth, but why it's claimed as an upart in the first place. Within the print, there exists a crushed trilobite, which proves this was indeed a pressed print, but also confirms an age of hundreds of millions of years. Thus, whatever made this print had a human-shaped foot, was seemingly wearing shoes or boots, 
and was heavy enough to crush an ancient arthropod. These facts, along with academia's miserable attempt to dismiss said upart, we therefore find highly compelling. The evidence for the existence of a past, now lost, yet once highly advanced and global civilization should now be overwhelming to anyone who has spent any amount of time researching the anomalies and similarities within ancient sites worldwide found on nearly every continent on Earth. There are countless sites claimed as a certain civilization's work Yet these claims not only often lack any explanation as to how these cultures built said ruins, or how, if built by said culture, they can be connected to other sites located in other countries thousands of miles away. These facts are simply academically ignored. Interestingly, another site we can now add to this list of locations that the known polygonal building civilizations pinpointed within the Arab Emirates. According to academic study, quote, the hilly archaeological site not only provides the earliest known evidence of an agricultural village in the United Arab Emirates, but also contains villages, burial grounds, and agricultural infrastructure. The largest collection in the UAE of tombs and buildings from this period is located at Hilly. A number of these Bronze Age structures are located within the Hilly Archaeological Park and are open to the public." End quote. We concur that the site is clearly from a range of different ages, yet along with these modern-looking buildings is one structure which we found incredibly interesting. Known as the Hilly Grand Tomb, like many other structures of unexplainable origin or of lost purpose, attributed to that of a tomb. Yet due to the polygonal masonry technique, a now lost technology found the world over clear for all to see and of an exquisite advanced quality. This labeling of a mere tomb to us has been brought into question. For simply due to the method of its creation, we can state that we do not know who, when, or indeed why such a structure in the Arab Emirates was created. It is undoubtedly a small building, yet one of profound features. Thus, it is a place which we find highly compelling. Rising nearly 400 feet above the desert floor in a remote section of New Mexico within ancient Anasazi territory is a place named Chaco Canyon, and within stands an imposing natural structure called Fajada Butte. Hidden from the world for over 700 years along a precarious narrow ledge, there lay a secret, ancient, astronomical observatory subsequently given the name Sun Dagger, and the reason why is nothing less than remarkable. It has been revealed that for more than a thousand years, the Sun Dagger has been revealing to all aware of its creation the subtle changing of the seasons. In 1977, it was thankfully rediscovered when rock art and petroglyphs were spotted nearby. Anna Sofer, who was cataloging the rock art, was one morning greeted by the Sun Dagger, slowly traveling across the wall traversing the strange, spiral patterns which were etched upon them. The intelligent Anna realized that the sun dagger could have been connected to the petroglyphs, so along with her colleagues, she came back at various dates throughout the year, eventually establishing the following information. On the summer solstice, the sun dagger appears near the top of the largest spiral, and over a period of 18 minutes it slices through the very center cutting the spiral in half before leaving it in shadow for another year. On the winter solstice, two daggers of light appear, lasting for 49 minutes, during which they frame the large spiral. Finally, an equally fascinating and more complex light show occurs on the spring and autumn equinoxes. The large spiral is carved in such a way that counting from the center outward to the right, there are nine grooves. On each equinox, a dagger of light appears that cuts through the spiral on different angles. Meanwhile, a second dagger slices through the center of the smaller spiral. These light shows, which had been going on for centuries, continued for several years after their rediscovery. However, in 1989, it was found that the granite slabs had shifted. The alignments that had been arranged so carefully were no more. It also seems impossible for us modern people to realign them as all attempts have failed. Was this sun dagger really made by the Anasazi Indians? Or was it a far older surviving relic? 
one that they were merely aware of, a relic which has unfortunately eroded away. Similar ancient light displays marking the solstices and equinoxes can be found at other locations as well, such as in the southwestern United States and Mexico. In a ruin in Hovenweep National Monument, near the borders of Utah and Colorado, light beams also illuminate spiral petroglyphs on the summer solstice. At Burrow Flats in Southern California, a winter solstice sun points a finger of light to the center of five concentric rings in an early Chumash rock art display. Were these monuments once used by a lost, ancient advanced group of marauders as calendar sites while traveling America? Perhaps one day we will know for sure. Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care.